Hey everyone, welcome to this Python tutorial. Today we're diving into something really important and super useful, the while loop. If you've ever wondered what it is, how to use it, or why you'd even need it when you have a for loop, this video is for you. So let's open up Visual Studio Code and get started. Alright, let's start by understanding the structure of a while loop. I'll type the basic syntax here, so you can see it. So, here's how it works. The keyword while is followed by a condition. As long as that condition is true, Python keeps running the code inside the loop. This block of code is indented, that's really important in Python. For example, if the condition is based on a number, Python will keep looping until that number no longer meets the condition. Let's look at a practical example. I'll write a simple program to count down from 10. I've created a variable called counter and set it to 10. The loop checks if counter greater than 0. If it is, it prints the current value and decreases the counter by 1. Let's run this. And there we go. The loop counts down to 1 and then stops because the condition counter greater than 0 is no longer true. Now let's see another example. What if we want to make sure a user enters a valid number? Here's how a while loop can help. Line 1, number equals negative 1. This initializes the variable number to negative 1, which ensures that the condition number less than 0 is true when the loop starts. Line 2, while number less than 0, here, the while loop is defined. The condition checks if number is less than 0. If it is, the loop runs. Otherwise, it skips the loop. Line 3, number equals integer input. Enter a positive number. Inside the loop, the program prompts the user to enter a number. It converts the input into an integer and assigns it to the variable number. Line 4. If number less than 0, this conditional statement checks whether the entered number is still less than 0. If it is, the following code runs. Line 5. Print. Invalid. Please try again. If the number is invalid, negative. A message is displayed asking the user to try again. The loop then repeats. Line 7. Print. You entered. Number. Once the user enters a positive number, the condition becomes false and the loop stops. This line then prints the valid number entered. Now, let's test this code with a variety of test cases to see how it performs under different conditions. Let's start by entering a negative number like negative 5. The loop should detect this as invalid and prompt the user again. As you can see, the loop catches the negative input and asks for a positive number until we enter something valid. What happens if we enter 0? Since 0 isn't less than 0, the loop should terminate immediately and accept 0 as the valid number. And there you go, the program correctly identifies 0 as valid and stops looping. Now let's try entering a positive number right away, say 10. The loop shouldn't even run in this case. Perfect. The loop skips entirely, as the condition isn't met from the start. Finally, let's test by entering a series of invalid numbers like negative 3, negative 2, and then finally a valid number like 7. The program works as intended, prompting us each time until we provide a valid number. It's robust against multiple invalid attempts. These test cases highlight how this while loop handles various scenarios gracefully, ensuring user input meets the criteria before proceeding. Let's continue. Now let's talk about the difference between a while loop and a for loop. A for loop is great when you know how many times you need to loop. For example, looping through a list or a range of numbers. On the other hand, a while loop is better when the number of iterations depends on a condition. Think of a while loop as more flexible. It's useful when you don't know how many times you'll need to loop. For example, waiting for user input or processing data until it meets certain criteria. So, why use a while loop if we already have a for loop? Good question. While loops are indispensable when you're working with conditions that aren't tied to a fixed number of iterations. For example, a game loop that runs until the player quits, or a data processing script that runs until there's no data left. While loops shine in scenarios where flexibility and conditions matter more than counting iterations. Before we wrap up, here's a challenge for you. Here's the problem. Write a program that doubles a number until it's greater than 100. I've written the outline for you. Try it out 
and let me know your solution in the comments. And that's it for today. We've covered the structure of a while loop, examples, differences from for loops, and even tackled a challenge question. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.